Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try some fractions that are a little bit more difficult to simplify, to reduce. All right, let's, uh, let's start with the first one. 420 divided by 660. Now notice I have that same fraction on here twice because there's different ways in which we can look at that fraction. So first we're going to employ the method where we're starting with the smallest prime number and work our way down the list of prime numbers. So what we're going to do on this one is realize that they're both even, the numerator and denominator are even, so I can divide the numerator by 2 and I can divide the denominator by 2. Using that method is always kind of easy because working with small numbers like the number 2 makes it easy to reduce the fraction. So 420 divided by 2 is 210 and 660 divided by 2 is 330. Notice both the numerator and the denominator are still even, so I can continue the process. So I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. So when we take 210 divided by 2, we get 105. When we take 330 divided by 2, we get, let's see, that would be 165. Quickly checking, 2 times this indeed gives us that. So we're good. At this point, we can no longer divide by 2. Maybe we can divide by 3, the next prime number. So 1 plus 5 is 6, which indeed is divisible by 3. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 5 is 12. Since 12 can be divided by 3, the denominator can be divided by 3 as well. So now we can move up to our next prime number, divide the numerator by 3, and divide the denominator by 3. When we do that, the numerator becomes 35. And the denominator becomes, let's see here, that's uh, 55. All right. At this point, notice that we can no longer divide by 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 5 is 10. But both numbers do end up in a 5, which means that they're not divisible by the next prime number, the number 5. So we can divide the numerator by 5, and we can divide the denominator by 5. And when we do that, the numerator, we get 7, and in the denominator we get 11, and since both of those are prime numbers, that's as far as we can go, which means that 420 divided by 660 is indeed 7 divided by 11. Why do I have that same fraction a second time? Because we can actually do this in a slightly smarter way. For example, since both the numerator and the denominator end up in a 10, I mean, in a zero, we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10 and reduce it much more quickly this way. So divide the numerator by 10 and divide the denominator by 10, which means we don't necessarily have to start with the smallest prime number. We can simply make life easier for ourselves and recognize since both end up in a zero, we can divide by 10. So this becomes 42 divided by 66. And now we have a much easier task at hand since the numbers are smaller. Now we can go ahead and, and continue with the number 2 since they're both even. So we can say that the numerator can be divided by 2, and the denominator can be divided by 2 as well, which means that now we get 21 divided by 33. Notice that both of those numbers can be divided by 3 because when you add 2 plus 1, you get 3. 3 plus 3, you get, three, you get 6. So we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 3. When we do that, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 33 divided by 3 is 11. And notice we get to the final reduced form much more quickly by being a little bit more clever about it. How about the number down here? 279 divided by 423. First of all, they are not even, so you cannot divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, but maybe we can divide it by 3. So let's add it up. So we get 2 plus 7 plus 9 is 18, 1 plus 8 is 9, so definitely the numerator can be divided by 3. I just added up the digits, and they add up to a number you can divide by 3. How about 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 is divisible by 3, so both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 3. So we'll go ahead and do that. So divide by 3, and divide by 3. So 279 divided by 3. 3 goes into 27 9 times, so that's 90. 3 goes into 9 3 times, so that would be 93 in the numerator. In the denominator, 3 goes into 42, well, that would be 14 times, plus 1, that would be 141. So 141 times 3 gives us 423. All right, are those numbers still divisible by 3? And the answer is, well, let's see. 
9 plus 3 is 12, so that is divisible by 3. 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 6, that's divisible by 3. So they're both still divisible by 3. Like that. So 93 divided by 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times, that's 30, plus 1, that's 31. 3 goes into 14, well, let's see. 3 goes into 120, 40 times. 3 goes into 21, 7 times, that's 47. Now, notice that 31 is a prime number, and 47 is a prime number as well. So therefore, if both numbers are prime, we can no longer reduce it, and that would be the final reduced form. Could we have jumped straight to dividing by 9? Well, let's see here. We have 279 divided by 423. Add up the digits. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 is divisible by 9. And add the digits. 4 plus 2, that's 6, plus 3 is 9. That's also divisible by 9. So essentially, we could have gone straight to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 9. And 279 divided by 9, that would be uh, 31. And 423 divided by 9, that would be 9 goes into uh, 36 four times. That would be 63. 4 plus 7, that would be 47. And sure enough, we get the exact same result. So you can see sometimes, again, we could be a little bit more clever about it and check right away to see if it's a divisible, divisible by 9 instead of just divisible by 3 twice. And we save ourselves a little bit of work. And that's how it's done.